Welcome to another video on Git, and in this one we're going to talk about the git ignore file and how you can use it to pretty much ignore any files that you don't want in your remote repository, but you do want in your local repository. So this can be quite useful actually if you want to keep something like your local Django settings, uh, some, maybe you want to override your settings so that you have uh, different database settings for your personal development uh, of your Django project versus what's actually in the repository which everyone is of course going to use. So maybe you want to just ignore the .pyc files which of course uh, you just don't want in your repository because they're going to be recreated every time you run that Django server and change uh, you know, change the pages, flick through your Django project and uh, just sort of use the code base so it'll, it'll just create them as it, as it needs to. So you don't really need them either. So a git ignore file is a really good way of sort of ignoring all of this. So let's just create one and I'll show you the syntax for sort of how you ignore these files as well. So let's just go and do vim, uh, I'm just going to use vim here, so vim.gitignore and so that's just going to create the file. So we can say, so it's a new file at the bottom here and what I can do is I can say star.pyc now this is going to ignore all the .pyc files uh, but it won't delete them or anything like that, it's just going to say uh, to git just don't look for these files when you're trying to track all the other files in this repository so I'm going to go ahead and do that save and quit and if I do git status again you notice here how I've got all these .pyc files uh, now you can see I haven't got any except for the .git ignore file which we just added so that's really good because it means that they're not going to be tracked by Git, so we don't actually need to commit them at all. So that's a lot better than having all the .pyc files in the remote repository. So one thing I can do is just do ls-a. So if I do ls, I can just see the, uh, you know, most of the things in this folder. If I do ls-a, I can see everything. So that includes all the .dot files and folders. So in Unix, of course, I'm on a Mac, so this is Unix based. Uh, it might be a little bit different on Windows, but for Mac and Linux, this is going to be pretty similar. So we've got a dot for uh, just the current directory that we're in. Uh, so two dots means the parent directory. Uh, and then all the dot files are hidden by default if you just try to list everything in the folder. Uh, but you can show that again with the dash A flag. Now, the dot git folder is, of course, it it has a dot at the start so it's hidden by default and the dot git file is what we just created. If you want to know what the git folder is, it's just where git stores everything to do with uh, how it monitors your repository essentially. So if we go cd.git, a little bit off topic here but uh, I think it's interesting. So this is everything in the dot git folder and you don't really need to know necessarily what most of this means but something we might get to eventually is uh, config and maybe git hooks as well at some point and uh, some of this stuff can be a little bit useful if you get into a sort of more advanced configuration with your uh, git project. Now what we can do now that we've got this .git ignore file is we can sort of add anything we want to it uh, you know just like we did the pyc files and I think I was in the wrong directory there so if I do uh, I'm just going to go back out of that and open the file so we've got star.pyc but we can really add anything here so what we can do is, for example, uh, if we did foo slash, this is just the example on uh, the Git, the website for Git, and foo slash is going to pretty much just look for foo uh, as the uh, folder, but not for any files or symlinks. So this uh, is going to ignore uh, any folder called foo, essentially. So I think if we have a folder called accounts, we could do like accounts forward slash and then that would ignore the accounts folder. Now of course that's a useful Django app in our project so we don't want to do that. The git.ignore file is something you tend to add to over time so I think for now in our project the dot star, the star dot .pyc is uh, pretty much all we need. Uh, I might sort of notice things as time goes on sort of things we would want to add to the dot .git ignore like something for example that we might want to add later on is maybe a local Django settings file so that we can override some settings uh, have git ignore that so that our local settings, maybe our local database settings or something that's unique to our development machine are not uh, sent to the remote repository or tracked by git in any way so that 
uh, other people don't have to share those same settings. That's uh, quite a common use case uh, with respect to working on a Django project with Git. Uh, but what I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm also going to ignore the database file. So at some point I might use uh, MySQL, but at the moment I'm just using the standard Django backend, which is uh, SQLite 3, which just creates a file on the disk. Uh, and then it stores the database in that. So I'm, I want to ignore that as well. So I'm going to do db.sqlite3. And this is a little bit more tricky than .pyc because if we quit that, then we do get status. You can see this has been modified since we last changed it. And not only that, it's also in our remote repository. So I think in the first video, I actually committed it as part of the commit. I just added everything and committed it. Uh, and really that's something that you shouldn't necessarily do. And what I want to do now is remove it, but I can't uh, remove it in the normal sense that I just do git rm for remove and then db.sqlite3. The reason for that is because that'll also remove it locally, which I don't want to do. So what I can do instead is I can do remove the cached uh, reference to this file so that git won't track it anymore it will remove it from the remote repository, but it should not remove it locally. So let's go and do that. It says remove that file, and then I can do git status. And now it says deleted that. But if we look on our computer, uh, we should still have db.sqlite3, which is really good. It means we've got a local uh, instance of our database with our data still in it. So we haven't lost the data by deleting the file entirely. Uh, if you weren't sure about that last command, then uh, you might want to have made sure that you have that data backed up. Uh, but I was pretty confident that it wasn't going anywhere. Now that we've done that, we can actually just make that commit. So commit that .git ignore file to the remote repository so that anyone else who clones the repository later on can have that .git ignore file automatically and it'll automatically ignore all of those files. So I'm just going to do git status just again to make sure nothing's changed and it hasn't so we've just deleted the uh, reference to the database as well as added the .git ignore file and of course we've got all those .pyc files so uh, it's just ignored them as well because of the .git ignore file. So I'm going to do uh, git add dash a git commit so making a commit with all this stuff in it and in fact I could do git status just to show that to you so we've added both of those things now we can do git commit dash m and we've got uh, let's just say added dot git ignore file and I'll say just to be clear I'll say uh, removed database Okay, so we've committed that now uh, to our local repository. So what I can do now is just do git push. And hopefully if there's no sort of merge conflicts or anything like that, we've uh, pushed successfully. So that's all you need to do to be able to create a git ignore file and start ignoring all those local files that you don't want in your remote repository.